Hey, I'm Bob at I Like To Make Stuff. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make a king size headboard. Start with a sheet of half inch plywood. It doesn't really matter what you use, this is gonna be the backing for your pattern and you're not even gonna see it. Now I find the center of the board, draw a line, and then from that point, draw some 45 degree angles. This is gonna serve as a guide once you start laying out the pattern. I went through my stack of pallet wood to find the narrowest piece, which in my case was about three inches. So I ran all the pieces over the table saw to trim off one rough edge. Then I set the fence to three inches and ran everything over again. This would give me a nice clean edge on both sides and all the pieces would be the exact same width. Next I just used the miter saw to trim off the ends of all the pieces so that everything would sit very squarely together. Take some time to lay out the pieces to find the pattern that you like. Once you've got that pattern, go ahead and put some glue down and then line up the center pieces to the lines that you drew initially. You want to make sure that these are in the right place because they set the angle and the placement for everything else. Put some glue down and then nail them down with brads. These take no load at all so they don't really have to be connected very well and the glue and simple brads is more than enough. You want to make sure that the pieces overhang the edges um, anywhere that you can, and anywhere that you can't, you can come back and fill in later with a scrap. Now flip it over and use the plywood as a guide. Don't cut the plywood, just cut the pallet pieces off along the edges. These pieces that you're cutting off are going to be the filler that you use to fill the gaps in your pattern. Now use those pieces to fill in the center section. You'll also want to fill in any of the gaps that were created by the other pallet pieces not being long enough. I had a couple of them, and it actually turned out to look pretty cool filling them in with these little pieces. Now go back and trim off the excess again. There should be a lot less to cut off this time, but it's the same principle. Next you need to find the center of your pattern, but it's not actually the highest corner that you see. It's halfway between where the pieces on the left and the pieces on the right overlap. And if you look at it, you'll understand what I mean. Now once you find that center point, measure halfway out on each end and then trim off any excess you have on both sides. You'll probably have one side that's longer than the other. Now I ran over it with the sander just to knock off some of the rough stuff. Um, you could make this a lot smoother if you wanted to, but in this case I wanted to keep it kind of rough and just take off anything that was dangerous. Then you're going to want to cut some 2x4s down to length for the legs. Now in this case it was going to be 54 inches tall. So I went ahead and trimmed two pieces down and then ran them through the table saw to knock off the rounded edge that kind of comes standard on 2x4s these days. I wanted to have a nice square leg. And once I knocked those corners off, it didn't look like it was a 2x4. It looked like an actual nice piece of lumber. I also cut down some 1x4s and 1x6s for a support on the legs and details on the top, which you'll see in a minute. I made pocket holes in the back of the pattern section to attach the legs. I wanted the front of the pattern section and the legs to be flush, so I made sure to put it together upside down. I set the 1x4 in place, evenly spaced on both ends, and made sure that it was flush with the back of the legs so that the headboard will sit against the wall. I made sure to countersink the screws so that they go all the way down because there's going to be a second layer of wood go on top of this lip. Put some glue on that piece and then lay on the thicker 1x6. This was cut down to around 4 inches I believe. I used brads because they were easy to fill the holes and not as obvious as screws would be. I cut a 2x4 down to the same width as the pattern section. This is going to act as the finishing frame for underneath the pattern. I squared off the edges of this one just like I did the legs on the table saw, but I wanted this one to be a 1.5 square block. I added a pocket hole to each end and screwed it into the legs. Ideally, this piece won't even be seen. It should be behind the top of the mattress. But while you're screwing it in, you would just want to make sure that it's flush with the front of the pattern section. 
I pre-drilled some holes and then drove some long screws down into the plywood and the pallet wood. Sorry about the focus here, but I was putting some pocket holes into the 1x6, which would act as a support going between the bottom of the two legs. Like before, I wanted this support to be flush with the front of the legs, so I used a clamp and a 2x4 to create a surface there for them both to lay on while I screwed it together. And that was all for construction. Now for finish, I used a natural stain which I'm really enjoying lately because it doesn't change the color of the wood, it just brings out the grain and the natural color that's already there. I only did one coat of poly over this because it doesn't really get handled much, it's not going to take much wear and tear, and I made sure to use a satin finish because I really like the natural look of the wood. So when you're all done, you get this. Now I put a herringbone pattern here in the center uh, because this was a commission piece and that's what the client wanted. Uh, you can put any pattern here in the center. It's not gonna change the construction. It's just gonna change how you you know, lay the pattern out. And so there's a lot of different types of looks you could get with this same basic headboard. Thanks for watching and I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please share it. Share it on Facebook, on Twitter, on uh, Pinterest, on uh, Instagram, however you share stuff with the people that you know. Please share this one. If you want to see more projects and all sorts of other stuff that I do, be sure to check out IlikeToMakeStuff.com. Everything I do ends up at IlikeToMakeStuff.com. These videos and blog posts and free plans and all sorts of stuff. You can have a conversation with me on Facebook. I do a lot of communication there and I like to see pictures of what you guys are making. Um, so, you know, check me out over there. I've met a lot of awesome people on Instagram and I love uh, seeing what people are making and talking to people over there. So be sure to check that out. If you would like to support my projects, be sure to check out Patreon. It's the best way for you to help me buy tools and buy supplies so that I can keep doing these. Thanks for watching guys and I'll have another video coming up very soon and I'll see you next time.